Well, hello, everybody. This is Yun Cannon, and I'm here with Max Wu. Very exciting startup story, success story uh, in the SaaS founder world. Max is the co-founder of Lava Reach, and I just really am excited to dive into this conversation uh, because he's been able to go from zero to 600K ARR in just under nine months. So that's, uh, that's really exciting. Congratulations on that, Max. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Yun. It's been a... Uh... Quite a journey. It's been a grind. A grind, but uh, you know, I I can imagine it. I, I want to hear hear the story of of what that grind looked like. But on the other side of the coin, I gotta congratulate you. I mean, wow, there's a lot of founders who have been struggling with you know their SaaS product for uh, a number of years to be able to just get it off the ground. Uh, you know, they might be getting stuck in development or they're just stuck in marketing. Uh, I get stuck in sales. So anyway, but for you to be able to, you know, really be able to prove out the the demand for it um, and go from zero to 600K in nine months, that's uh, that's really to be applauded. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Ian. Thank you. Again. So, you know, we want to um, I want to make this conversation valuable for other SaaS founders who are just starting out in their journey. Um, or founders who are looking to diversify their offerings and just launch a new product. So mm -hmm. what I love about your story is that um, you really have, you know, an everyday background. So there's there's not this, you know, people have sort of limiting beliefs of, oh, you know, I need to have graduated, you know, with a, an MBA or I need to have had X amount of experience already, you know, 15 years experience, 20 years experience and enterprise um, sales or, or whatever the, right? So I just, mm. I love that your story is, you're, you're an everyday ordinary guy, not to take away from, <laughs> I'm sure you're extremely hardworking and intelligent and all that, but it's, uh, but I, I think that just gives people um, the encouragement and the hope that, hey, you know what? Um, they can learn how to do this. So first of all, tell us a 60 second on Lava Reach, because I, I love what your product does. Sure. Yeah. So the high level problem that we solve is our customers really fall into two camps. One are the ones that are spending a lot of time manually researching accounts and prospects. So that's the first camp. Second camp are customers that are spending a lot of time thinking about how to reach out to their customers, how to personalize outbound, and really just standing out from the crowd. So what we built here at Lavery to solve that problem is with a proprietary web browsing AI technology for your sales teams to be able to research hundreds of different companies, prospects, and any websites in under one minute and feed that same data to personalize outbound at scale. So it's really about increasing uh, outbound volume without sacrificing conversion, empowering BDR teams to do their jobs much more effectively. Wow, this is huge. Because uh, I know when I work with my clients and you know founder-led sellers I work with, as well as um, companies who do have sales teams, that's that's a huge uh, frustration, you know, where they they feel like they just can't quite get the hit the ground running and actually start selling because they're just just knee deep in all this research. Um, so Absolutely. I love that. And that in your stories, you got that idea just from your experience as an AE. And BDR, yes. Uh, I came from a background of selling data fabrics to enterprise CIO CTOs. Uh, so obviously, you know, selling to enterprises, uh, it's long sales cycle. You need to do a ton of research before reaching out because you have to do a lot of account based selling, right? Uh, multi threading, understand a person's business before reaching out. I used to comb through any reports, 10Ks on a day to day basis, you know, just control effing to find, um, you know, certain keywords like data modernization initiatives, cloud migration, you know, data complexity and all that. That process took a long time. It took at least, you know, 10 minutes. 30 minutes sometimes just to find, um, you know, deeper research about certain companies I want to reach out to. So that's kind of where the idea was uh, born. And obviously AI just came out uh, with ChatGPT and all that. So we're just thinking about applications to that. How do I apply new technologies to the problems I'm facing on a day-to-day -day basis? That's really awesome. So do you have a, a technical background? Does your co-founder have a technical background or, or did you have yeah, to honestly, hire somebody to, to, to play that role? No, so um, uh, I have two co-founders. Uh, mm -hmm. One is Daniel. He's our CEO and co-founder. He came from a background of uh, finance, actually, as an ops. 
and I've been friends with him ever since grade 10. So we've been ten, friends for like 10 years. We've tried multiple different businesses together from, you know, selling hemp infused dog treats to knocking on people's doors, asking them if they wanted their fences painted. Um, and then in September, we met our tech co-founder, so our CTO, his name is Yiming. And uh, he was previously a team lead at Snapchat. So um, yeah, we brought the team together and, you know, we've been uh, grinding on this business so far. It's uh, It's been a journey. <laughs> wow. So it sounds like so. What, did you have the idea first, and then and then you just you know went and decided, hey, I've got two good friends here that we can pull together our our talents and yeah, that's right. Company. So that's basically that's right. How it was born. Yeah, okay. messaging took a long time. We started with CRM, uh, auto CRM, uh, CRM updates, mm -hmm. so that salespeople don't have to review a call and then put in the um, you know meeting summary to a CRM. We started. With didn't work, but weren't booking any meetings. So we pivoted into uh, doing LinkedIn auto personalization. And um, we had a little bit of traction there, but number one, the price was too low to justify like a sales led type of go to more, uh, market motion. And the second problem that we faced was when we were selling into bigger teams, people just weren't seeing value because the level of personalization was just way too generic. And that's how we um, pivoted into lava reach. Because now our core belief is that AI doesn't do a good job of personalizing unless it has our customers' unique research data. So our AI technology mimics how sales teams typically do research and then feed that same data into AI to personalize. So it took some time to get the messaging right. Mm. Yeah. So uh, when you went from zero to 600K in nine months, is that... Uh, af like, is that when you just finally got all the iterations nailed and dialed in? Or like, tell us about the period it took you guys to even go through the iterations of messaging and and you know working on the product. Yeah, for sure. So um, we really settled down on uh, Lavarouche's messaging in September. It took about three months prior to that um, to experiment on you know CRM updates and um, you know LinkedIn auto personalization and all that. Um, and in fact, like our first customer, we closed them on a slide deck. Mm -hmm. And then the next three, we closed them on spreadsheets. So we got up to 100K, uh, pretty much selling no product. Because I don't think people care about how you do it. As long as they get results, that's all that matters. Um, yeah, so we were just delivering spreadsheets for the first four months of the company from September to December. Oh, wow. No kidding. So then... What was your sales motion? Was it all three of you uh, getting out there selling or you? Uh, it was mainly on me to generate the top of the funnel. Um, so making cold calls, you know, writing cold emails, LinkedIn messages to try to get people to get onto a call with us. And once we get onto the call, all three founders are present just because, um, you know, I think it's very important for the entire team to understand exactly what our customers biggest problems are what their current workflow looks like uh as well as obviously figure out pricing and all of that as well mm -hmm. that's awesome very cool so then you're doing really the heavy lifting of um doing all the the lead gen the business development so that was your whole play um when we were you know i was taking a look uh with the intake earlier that's how you built it was just cold outreach that's right uh, absolutely no marketing support or anything like that um i mean i came from a background of selling data fabric so uh, mm -hmm. it's honestly much easier to sell cro's vp of sales rather than selling to enterprise dio ctos really really have the fundamental belief that you only need two things to start a business you need a list of contacts and you need an auto dialer to make five calls at a time this entire business is built on those two things and obviously my team and idea, right? Uh, but I would say, you know, honestly, all you need is to get a list of contacts, upload them into an auto dialer, make a hundred calls in an hour, test out the messaging, test out whether or not there's something that people need. If you haven't been booking any meetings with the idea, then you know that you should probably scrap it and pivot into a different idea. Um, so yeah, like that, that's, how I believe we have uh, kind of messaging mark market fit, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you're the main one doing the, the cold calling. So you, you're dialing at about 100 dials an hour. And 
what was the um, average you know, number of people who would pick up the phone uh, yeah. when you're dialing 100 an hour? Conversion rate is about, you know, 10% would pick up. That's, you know, industry standard. And then I'll probably book five out of those 10. Um, so, you know, my calendar is obviously packed. Like uh, my BDRs have been amazing, by the way. We, we do have uh, two BDRs working with us currently. Mm -hmm. um, week over week, they're booking around 30 meetings. Um, nice. So, yeah, I think, uh, honestly, yeah, parallel dialers, change my life uh instead of like clicking one by one it just make five calls at a time when someone picks up the other four calls get dropped it's much much more efficient that way and cost at most like i think it's like 300 bucks a month the roi is just off the roof that's uh some pretty awesome numbers uh so talk us talk to us about um when you all right so some of the folks who are listening that are just starting their journey um and there's concerned about their their budgeting and they want to bootstrap the way you're you know you're currently bootstrapped what was um your total overhead expenses between like zero and your your first nine months zero and 600 yeah sure um so obviously when we're at zero we didn't have any cost right it was just literally the database and in fact i was using my old company's database and we got sued for it <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we literally didn't put in any money into the business when we're at zero. Um, and then when we had a little bit of revenue coming in, that's when we bought, you know, Zoom Info. That's when we bought an auto dialer. Uh, and up, we didn't even hire any BDRs up until April of this year. So it's only been three months since we've hired BDRs. Uh, the reason why we didn't hire early on is because of how we started to figure out messaging, right? We started to figure who we're going to sell to, whether or not we're going to convert them on sales calls. So we need the LTV to CAC to stay steady for a while before we can say, hey, let's add head heads because mm -hmm. the LTV to CAC is good. You know, how do we add heads, heads just to increase the volume without sacrificing current, current conversions? Um, and even now, uh, our LTV to CAC is really, we don't have CAC. The reason why I say that is because um, the BDRs that we currently hire, they're co-ops, meaning that they're, uh, you know, still finishing up their degree in university and the Canadian government, we're a Canadian company, mm -hmm. uh, they give out, um, you know, grants to hire co-ops essentially for free. So from a cash flow perspective, yes, like we're, um, you know, giving out money to these BDRs first, but we get to recoup that money back either at the end of the fiscal year or at the end of a co uh, someone's co-op term. So nice. yeah, it's, it's still like, no. yeah. I guess it's, it's just the tools, right? And if you're talking about tools, we're probably spending around, you know, three to $4,000 a year right now. Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to give people lots of hope that they, they can do this on a budget. And I'm, I'm impressed that you get, uh, you gave confidence in um, like a college student who's looking for co a co-op to be in that BDR role. Uh, whereas I think a lot of founders would be hesitant on um, bringing on somebody so green. So that, for sure. yeah, kudos to you for, to, for finding those folks, for just having confidence that they can get similar results. Um, so you got, all right, so going back to, you know, generating your first initial set of customers. So you, first you used Zoom Info and then you built your product and used Lava Breach to find your lead and develop your lead list. Exactly. So we have two parts of the business, right? Or two parts of the value proposition, research and personalization. Now, obviously personalization, it depends on whether or not they already have great conversions on emails on LinkedIn. If they're getting 10 to 20% response rate, rest assured, we're going to be able to annex the outbound volume without sacrificing conversion because we're just mimicking how they would typically, um, you know, personalize research and all that. But really, the place where we're adding the most value is the research. That's something that, you know, different companies can do right now that we can do. So they're our best retaining customers. How do we find more of those customers that do a ton of research? And, you know, just within this targeting problem, it took a couple of months for us to figure it out. And now we're really doubling down on the strategy of using our own tool 
to find companies that have enterprise AEs and enterprise BDRs. Um, cause often they're selling into enterprises. They have to do a ton of research on a day to day basis. Uh, and obviously we also feed a lot of uh, data into the way we do outreach as well. Like for example, headcount growth rate, if they're hiring for any BDRs, AEs, uh, if a company recently got funded, that's a trigger for us to do outreach. If there's like a CRO that recently changed jobs, we'll reach out to those people as well with that as an observation and as a hook. Mm. So then when you're talking about figuring out your own target market, did you um, hone in on any verticals per se uh, or just generally enterprise companies who have EDRs and AEs? When we first started, I tried so many different verticals, so many different job titles, all the way from, you know, staffing and recruitment, all the way to software companies in terms of industries. And then in terms of titles, I tried, you know, VP of business development, all the way to, you know, sales enablement, sales ops and all that. Uh, we found our sweet spot to be VP of business development, um, some VP of sales here and there. Um, and I'd say that we really honed down on the target market probably closer to like four or five months ago before we hired the BDRs. Mm, gotcha. Gotcha. It was all experimentation, right? Like, you know, different personas, like they face different problems. Their day to day is also very different. So it definitely takes time to really understand who you should be selling to and what you should be saying to those people um, to get them onto demos. Yeah. He's like, what is the real problem that we're trying to solve here, right? And who are we trying to solve it for? Right. So going back to then your feature set of how you're different with Lava Reach, um, you mentioned one of the triggers are things like you know companies who are recently funded. Can you give us examples of other triggers that Lava Reach can um, can be used for or, or can pick up? For sure. I'll talk about the biggest one. The biggest one would be like a hiring trigger as an example. So uh, we basically scrape in real time from uh, different job boards like Indeed, LinkedIn, and so on to grab companies that are hiring for very specific roles. For instance, uh, if you're a marketing agency where you grab companies that are hiring for a director of marketing or marketing coordinators and so on, uh, if you're a company that sells like, let's say, some sort of um, enterprise AI implementation, Right. We look for enterprise companies that are hiring for AI engineers. And in our own case, uh, something that's been working out very well, our companies are hiring for BDRs. Right. Because, yeah, like we're empowering BDRs to obviously make their jobs a lot easier. Outsource the research, personalization on LinkedIn and email to us. Your reps focus on making cold calls. Awesome. So outside of those two triggers, does it have any, does it offer any other trigger options just as, out of curiosity? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have job changes as uh, another trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have triggers like business expansion. And obviously you can also upload a list and just filter it down by the people that you want to target. Meaning like, for example, let's say you're a company that does, um, that helps companies set up uh, manufacturing facilities in Mexico, let's say. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you don't want to reach out to manufacturing firms that already have a facility in Mexico. So you'd be able to upload a list, and then we'll be able to research at scale whether or not they already have a facility in Mexico, filter out the ones that uh, already have one, and only target the ones that currently do not have a facility in Mexico. That's just one example. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh the other piece that I was really impressed with when I was taking a look at some of your um, the feature set videos for Lava Reach uh, is the personalization is so much faster. We've tested a number of other AI driven tools for outreach and the personal is they might say it does personalize, but it but what it spits out is just so um, it sounds robotic. It doesn't yeah. sound natural. Uh, yeah. Sounds ingenuine. That's the exact problem that we faced when we were in the LinkedIn personalization side of things, because the only data that we were pulling is a person's LinkedIn profile. So their accomplishments, uh, you know, um, their job experiences, how long their tenure is and so on. And that's why we built a general purpose AI technology for you to be able to research 10 Ks, PR releases, news articles, pretty much whatever you want, right? Like if someone has um, attended any sort of webinars, that's something that we're able to identify. Um, so 
I'll say that the way we do things is a bit different from how OneShot, Apollo, you know, all these different uh, AI SDRs do it, is that we combine human written text with AI. Meaning that instead of boxing customers in to put in a value proposition, uh, to put in the job title that they want to sell to, we're giving our customers the flexibility to also put in their unique messaging that they know works. Right. Yeah, so uh, it's going to come off as much more uh, genuine, much more natural um, when the prospect does see the email. Yeah, well, I'm excited to uh, continue to mill around with with the tool because it you, you seem like you you nailed in uh, on a hugely even within AI just a frustration, a big frustration point with uh, low quality output that a lot of AI. Um, enable tools are 100 percent to to be transparent right like uh, obviously the time to value is still something that we're trying to fix because if we're giving people the flexibility to craft their own prompts knowledgeable about how to use ai uh, it's going to be really hard for them to even set up the first uh personalized email and that's exactly our biggest challenge right now um as a company is how do we decrease the time to value for our customers how do we get them to see value in not one hour, but in you know less than three minutes? So we're currently doing a total um, revamp or we're rethinking about how the platform should actually work from a user experience perspective. Mm, gotcha. So your onboarding now takes how long? Uh, so we, honestly, most of our customers are on full service right now, uh, meaning that we set everything up for them. Because uh, we're really following the YC, you know, Y Combinator uh, methodology of, mm -hmm. you know, talking to customers, reiterating but based on their feedback, as well as hand-holding them an early stage so that we get feedback uh, really close to them. Um, and so I would say that the onboarding time uh, for a self-service user, it honestly takes way too long. It takes around like one to two hours to actually set everything up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that we're currently working on. But for full service, we actually do uh, a lot of consulting as well, meaning that we do a lot of discovery into their ICPs, um, you know, the research workflow that they ideally want, you know, how they want the messaging sound. We even take their sales collateral, upload them to our AI internal knowledge base. Um, so there's a lot of white glove component to it uh, in terms of servicing. Uh, but yeah, like self-service some it is the place where we're trying to, you know, really double down on by making them time to value much shorter right so and the, the other question i had for you when we're talking about challenges time to value definitely is a challenge for for pretty much all SaaS. um yep. the other thing you mentioned was moving away being a full service lead gen um tell us more about that challenge that you're currently working on yeah so um we are we were acting more of like a productized service um because at the end of the day like in order for us to create a self-service SaaS tool we need to get a lot of data and because of how we're a bootstrap company we just don't have you know um cash reserve to be spending on data up front mm -hmm. and that's why we were running as a full service type agency where you know we just talk to a bunch of customers we understand what their needs are we test our hypothesis of whether or not ai research and personalization is going to help um, book meetings, right? And after we tested that out, we're realizing that, okay, the product is actually useful, right? Like people see value, people are closing, people are booking meetings. So the next step is to open that up for self-service um, to obviously lower the barriers to customers by lowering the price. And then obviously uh, it's much more scalable to build a self-service business rather than, you know, like a full service type lead gen agency. Gotcha. So there's a combination of you know, just the timeline of things. Uh, yeah. Because instead of like build, measure, learn, um, we kind of started with learn, measure, build. Uh -huh. So, yeah. <laughs> like that. And now we have to go back into the actual BML cycle. Yeah, gotcha. Well, I appreciate you being so transparent, Max, with, um, you know, both your wins and your current challenges that you're, you're working on solving. Uh, you shared a lot of great value bombs and I just love your success journey. And I think a lot of our listeners can, 
can just walk away from this interview think, saying, hey, you know what? They can do this. Um, they can just take one cold call playbook and, and just do it at scale uh, and just set that benchmark with 500 calls, 500 dials a day. Uh, and that's that's probably the biggest variable, right? Uh, uh, next to messaging, of course, um, that many SaaS founders might not yet, you know, as far as founder-led sellers might not yet be doing. Um, so before we wrap, is, is there any other piece of information or value, tip, advice that you can offer uh, our listeners of other SaaS founders? Hmm, I have to think about that. Um, I honestly say the biggest thing is to not be afraid of picking up the phone because that is literally the fastest way for you to validate whether or not there's something that people want. Because if you're getting your ideal customer on the phone and to test out whether or not there's something that people want, you're going to get to um, you know messaging market fit much, much faster. And you might not product first before selling it. Because uh, if people believe in your idea, they're open to working with you. And if you're actually solving a problem, you know, mm-hmm. ten out of, uh, nine out of ten times, they want to work with you to figure out their problem, even if you have no product, because they believe that, you know, you can solve their problem, right? Yeah. And that's, you did the whole art of pre-selling, which was, uh, is beautifully done. So check yeah. out uh, Max Wu's co- company, Lava Reach, uh, and that's lavareach.com, right? Let me just double check on that. That's right. We're actually yeah. doing a website uh, re- revamp sometime soon as well. So yeah, look out for that. Lavareach.com. All right. So thanks, Max, for sharing your story. And uh, Yeah, thank you so much. To be able to track your growth and, and just keep up with how you guys are expanding. Yeah, thank you so much, Ian. Stay tuned.